Today we will solve polynomial equations by factoring, um, finding square roots, maybe once. We will also use the zeros to sketch the graph of the equation. And something that I want to remind you is the zeros are the same as the x-intercepts. And that's the same as the solutions. Those three words are used interchangeably. The solutions of the polynomial equation are also the x-intercepts when you graph it. And we also refer to those as the zeros of the function. So here's our steps. Set the equation equal to zero. See if you can factor out a common monomial. We've referred to that as factoring out the GCF. Then look at which type of factoring problem you're dealing with factor it, and then set each factor equal to zero and solve. So let's take a look at number one. x cubed minus x squared minus 12x equals zero. So step one, set it equal to zero, done. Step two, is there a common monomial factor? Is there a GCF that we can factor out of all three terms? x. That leaves us with x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. Keep factoring. Now we have a trinomial to factor. If you need to use the blanks, you can. But think about what two numbers multiply to give you negative 12 and add up to negative 1. 3 and 4. And then to think about which one should be negative, which one should be positive, if you're trying to add up to a negative number, the bigger number needs to be negative. So x minus 4, x plus 3. This whole thing is equals 0. So next it says set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Our factors are x, x plus 3, and x minus 4. So we're going to set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve. So my yellow factor, what is the solution that comes from my yellow factor? Zero. If we want to set the factor x equal to zero, x would equal zero. My green factor, x plus three. If we set x plus three equal to zero, we would subtract three on both sides and our solution would be negative three. And the blue factor, if we set x minus 4 equal to 0, we would get a solution of x equals positive 4. So the solutions are 0, negative 3, and 4. The x-intercepts are 0, negative 3, and 4. And when we turn to the next page in our notes, the next step is put negative 3, 0, and 4 on the x-axis. And we're going to look at how does the graph cross through those points. So those are the x-intercepts on the graph. All right, take a look at number two. The first problem is it's not equal to zero. So our first step is to subtract 28 on both sides. So that we have equal zero on the right side. See if you can factor out a common monomial. Do those four terms have anything in common? No. Step three, determine which type you are dealing with. If it's four terms and you can't factor out greatest common factors, that's when you split it down the middle and factor by grouping. So take a moment and factor the first group, factor the second group. In the first group, it looks like they have x squared in common. And you can use that first set of parentheses to help you figure out what the second group has in common. Because you want the parentheses to say 3x plus 7, so they must have negative 4 in common. Am I done factoring that one? No. So x squared minus 4 factors further into x plus 2, x minus 2, 
3x plus 7 equals 0. There are three factors here. My yellow factor is x plus 2. My green factor is x minus 2. And my blue factor is 3x plus 7. Okay, x plus 2. Set x plus 2 equal to 0. Our solution, our root, our x-intercept would be negative 2. For green, our x-intercept is positive 2. How about the blue factor, 3x plus 7? Uh, we would have to do 3x plus 7 equals 0. Set the factor equal to 0 and solve. Subtract 7 on both sides, then divide by 3. Do you all want a shortcut so that you don't have to do that every time? Yeah. So the shortcut is, take a look at the yellow and green. In the green, it says x minus 2. What number is in front of the x? A 1. We took the opposite of 2 and then divided it by 1 to get positive 2 over 1. Here we're doing the same thing. Opposite of 7 is negative 7 over 3. So take the opposite of the number divided by the coefficient of x. So you don't have to write this down, but let's say that one of the factors was 5x minus 2. What would your solution be? Positive 2 over 5. Let's say another set of parentheses said um, 9x plus 4. What would be the solution? Negative 4 over 9. Are you seeing the pattern? So now you don't have to do 9x plus 4 equals 0 and solve the equation. You can just do the opposite of the number divided by whatever's in front of the x. Okay, so again, you don't have to write that. I just wanted to show you that because anything that you can do to save yourself time is going to be good. All right, try example three on your own. Okay, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. We would factor by grouping. And get x squared minus 9 times x plus 2 which factors further into x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 2. The order that you have those parentheses does not matter. Your solutions are negative 3, positive 3, and negative 2. In example 4, after you put it equal to 0, the next step is, are there any term, anything in common in these two terms? 5 and w. That will leave us with w squared minus 10. Am I done factoring? Your first inclination is to say no because you see w squared minus, and w squared minus usually means difference of two squares. But is 10 a perfect square? No, so we can't do difference of two squares. So we actually are done. Next is solving. If we put 5w equal to 0, what would w have to be to make 5 times w equal 0? 0. So one of our solutions is 0. The other one, we will have to set this equal to 0. So to w squared minus 10 equals 0. We would add 10 on both sides to get w squared equals 10. How do we undo a square? square root. And when we square root, we have to put a plus minus in front of it. So our solutions are 0 and positive or negative square root of 10. That means this graph. If you actually found the square root of 10, I believe it's um, like 3.1 something. Negative 3.1 something 0 and positive 3.1 something would be where this graph would cross the x-axis.